More women than ever are serving on corporate boards in Canada, but that progress is moving at a glacial pace, according to a new report by the Canadian Board Diversity Council. It found that women make up 19.5% of board members of Canada's biggest companies. That's up from 17% in 2014. The rise follows the introduction of a new comply or explain policy one year ago. It forces publicly traded companies to report the number of high-ranking women they have and clarify their diversity policies. The Diversity Council calls this year's increase encouraging. But if the change in gender diversity continues at this pace, gender parity is still 13 years away. Of Canada's 500 largest companies, 109 have all male boards, according to the Diversity Council. It told us the names of some of those companies. Among them, the financial holding company Fairfax Financial. Forex Products Company, Canfor, and EL Financial, the parent of Insurer Empire Life. In a recent interview of, in a recent review rather, of how the comply or explain policy is working, only 7% of those companies surveyed set a target for women on boards. Of the companies without a target, 66% said they chose not to because, quote, candidates are selected based on merit. The founder of the Diversity Council said in an interview, don't tell me there are no women with the skills to be on executive teams and boards of directors in 2015 because the rest of the world is proving us wrong. Well, a related story here, the global gender pay gap also appears to be years away from closing, 118 years to be exact. The World Economic Forum believes it will take until 2133 for the pay gap between men and women to finally be eliminated. Meanwhile, there's nearly a quarter of a billion more women in the workforce today than 10 years ago. Yet around the world, women's average annual pay today equals men's pay a decade ago. Pamela Jeffrey is the founder of the Canadian Board Diversity Council. She joins us now. That was quite an emotional quote from you. Did yes, you feel it emotional when you said it? I did feel emotional because I look across the pond at London and the UK. And it's very interesting because the UK is our fourth largest trading partner. And five years ago, Bruce, they had 12.5% of their board seats on their largest 100 companies held by women. And now they have 26.2%. Hmm. They exceeded the target they set for themselves with comply or explain. They're showing it can be done without quotas. We're not in favor of quotas but we want to see further action. Canada has slipped to 15, the U.S. is at 9, the U.K. Yes. is at 4. It's kind of embarrassing. It is embarrassing when you think that we're competing globally against companies that have the benefit of diverse teams, and research shows that diverse teams drive better financial performance. So we're at a disadvantage. Now, there is some things mm -hmm. to celebrate here. Do you celebrate yes. the overall number? I'm happy that we have reached 19.5%, considering that we were, you know, 10% eight years ago. So we have seen an increase. But to be honest, as Justin Trudeau said, Prime Minister Trudeau, yeah, this is 2015. I was quite surprised by the figure 109 all male boards and the names you mentioned. Yes. I went on their websites, yeah. assuming that those websites are accurate. Yes. What you see is a group of old white men. Yes. How does that happen today, given the strength that women have, if not functional strength in yes. the industry that they're in, which is yeah. what a lot of people argue, they have strength in leadership in yes. consulting, accounting, law, government affairs, public affairs, all those other parts of the business mosaic. Yes. You have hit the nail on the head. Most boards, in fact, according to our research, 80% of board seats are filled when they become available by the directors themselves who look across the table and ask, who do you know? 80% mm. of board seats are filled that way and unfortunately most of those directors who are male do not have many women who are in their networks. Right. The, the quote on merit, candidates mm -hmm. are selected based on merit, mm -hmm. it feels like a bit of an insult because it implies that companies that have had more mm -hmm. success on the board front mm -hmm. use some other criteria mm -hmm. other than merit. Mm -hmm. Well, I feel the same way. And so I'm not saying that as a, a woman, I'm saying that as someone who has been in business for 31 years and I look at a range of outstanding companies that are delivering strong financial performance and they have strong executive teams populated with women.
How do you influence recruiting criteria? I sit on a, a not-for-profit board, but yeah. one of our criteria looks at gender and diversity yes. in all its many facets. But if it's not on the criteria, how is it ever going to be that that's what you're recruiting for? So when you're recruiting for a board position or an executive team position, there needs to be criteria that takes away the bias. So it needs to be skills-based. So when putting together a position description, one needs to identify the specific skills that are being sought. So let's use human resource skills as an example because traditionally many women have been in human resource roles. Now with pay for performance and other comp issues that have risen to the forefront for corporate directors, many boards are realizing how important it is for human resource expertise to be represented on the board. So when looking at uh, an empty board seat, the board ought to ask itself, what skills are we missing to run this business to deliver more shareholder value? And if they take a skills-based approach instead of a who-do-you-know approach, that's going to drive change. I read the, the, the page in the paper that has the graduates yes. of the corporate director's yes. programs, and there yes. are a number of them. Has that helped? Has that helped alleviate the concern, improve the supply? Not a lot quite frankly, because it's not a supply issue. Ah, it's a demand issue. It's a demand issue. Hmm. So women are ready, they're just not being called. Correct, correct. I worked on diversity 20 years ago when yes. I was back in the corporate world. Yeah. Uh, how do you stay motivated? Yeah. I stay Here you are, the same conversation yes. again and again. How do, you, yeah. how do you stay motivated? I stay motivated because I look at the results that we've achieved through what we call a Made in Canada approach. So at the Canadian Board Diversity Council, we're working with corporate directors, we're working with shareholder groups, we're working with media, we're working with everyone who has a stake at what's going to happen. And I stay motivated because we're seeing the change, yet we're not seeing ourselves catching up to the rest of the world. We're in 15th place. So what keeps me motivated is knowing that we have work to do. What's your call to action to our viewers out there who might have an ability to influence how this plays out? Sure. Our call to action is when you have an empty board seat to have at least three individuals on the short list who are diverse and to embark on a rigorous search process when looking to identify new talent for your board. I love that we had this conversation. Yeah. I hope we never have to have it again. Yeah. I hope we talk about something else yes. that's really interesting yes. other than this again. Yes. But thank you for your time. Thank you very we much, Bruce.